Hello everyone, thanks for watching the video. I'm in northern Michigan, it's midsummer, it's hot, it's like 95 Fahrenheit, humid, not exactly great camping weather. But the camping videos must go on, so I thought I would take an opportunity to make a video about camping in extreme heat. I also want to take this opportunity to say thank you to all my viewers. I've hit 100,000 subscribers, and this will be the first video that comes out since that milestone. For all of you who've been there along the journey, I really appreciate it and I can't thank you enough for uh, supporting the channel, commenting, you know, giving me feedback. I really enjoyed um, reading all your comments and I really enjoy um, providing the videos for you. So camp is all set up. I'm out in direct sun. I have my uh, canoe with me and I have my ATV with me. I'm in the direct sun because we're going to need uh, a lot of solar power with the heat that we're going to be dealing with on this trip. So on this trip I got a few things that I want to accomplish and one of them is camping for the first time with my adorable sister. I'm here about three days in advance of her showing up and I'm going to be taking her on a paddle and it'll be just a brief kind of thing in the video but uh, that is one of the reasons why I'm here. Another reason is exploring on my ATV. So I'm getting ready to head out on my ATV to do some exploring for um, a variety of reasons. And a bonus, if you watch through to the end of the video, I will give you a sneak peek of the DIY raft project that I've been working on all summer long. So I'll give you a quick glimpse here, and I'll give you a little more detail at the end of the video. One of the things when I travel with my ATV alone is that my wife's rightfully terrified that one, I have to take it down off the ramps of my tonneau cover, which is dangerous, and then when I disappear on a Grizzly 700, that it's, uh, let's face it, it's dangerous, and I get that. I am not a speed demon. I'm not out there um, racing around trails. I'm I have my ATV mainly for exploring. So one of the challenges I find with exploring new places all the time with an ATV is that locating trails and knowing what kind of trails they are. Um, I find riding my Grizzly ATV on side-by-side -side trails sucks. The, uh, the side-by-sides dig certain ruts in and riding those trails with an ATV is not enjoyable. So I'm happy to announce that I've partnered with Onyx Off-Road and I will be using their software to guide all my adventures in the future. So one of the best things I like about it is it tells me where the trails are and I can filter to uh, look for trails that are under 50 inches wide. So I'm going to show you on the laptop here. So I'm going to be exploring the area around Muskrat Lake. On my desktop, I pull up activities and I click on that. And up comes this little menu and drop down box. And what I like about this is that I can toggle between all trails, but I can click on 50 inch trails and that will only highlight what I can ride with my ATV. I don't have to worry about riding on side-by-side -side trails. Being able to filter the trails is a great thing, but probably my favorite thing about Onyx is the clear identification of private property. As a visitor to the United States, I really take precautions to not trespass on anyone's property. So I love that this spells it out for you. It's very clear to identify private property. So for me, that's a huge thing. So if you're interested in Onyx, I have a discount code, it's Drenaline. I'll put it on the screen here. If you want to save yourself 20%, it's only available for US residents. That discount code's good for premium or elite memberships. And you'll also be helping out my channel and supporting the videos that I make for you guys.
one of my favorite summertime dinners. Mm. I'm sweating, but it's a good sweat. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching me make those BLTs as much as I enjoyed eating them. They were fantastic. Yes, I actually had two. Normally, I cook a lot of bacon for leftovers in the morning, but I didn't eat uh, anything since breakfast, and that was like a 2 o'clock lunch, so I ate all that. Hard to believe, isn't it? In keeping with the feast, I'm going to uh, show you my new uh, addition to my camp setup. I got a fridge freezer that I've been using, and the game changer for me is having ice cream and ice cubes. It's 95 Fahrenheit out. Uh, I'm sweating like usual. I wish I could be using my wood stove right now. I do not like summer camping as much as I love winter camping. So yeah, I got some ice cream and I'm going to go over the top with a nice Sunday here and sit underneath the awning and cool off a bit. Oh, got some Ben and Jerry's and that is just, and look at that, going completely over the top with a little bit of whipped cream. So a lot of times in my videos you'll see me eat something and chances are it's maybe cold because I've been filming. Can't really fake it with ice cream when it's 95 outside so I literally just scooped this up. I had to set up the camera really quick because it's melting so I'm going to have to put this in a real bowl. Oh, But it does feel good in the summer. Okay, it's been a long day. I've had my ATV riding in, a uh, sweaty ice cream covered polyester shirt. It's not smelling the best. So one of the nice things about summer camping in my setup, having my DIY travel trailer, is my DIY shower that's almost completed. Of course, it's 99% down. You need a little bit of trim work inside, but for the most part, it's completely functional and it's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna get cleaned up and I'm gonna sit by a little campfire, another little trick for summer camping. Sit back and relax for the night and call it a day because I fit a lot in so let's get cleaned up okay so I fill up one of my sinks with some water from my water tank I don't have a hot water heater like a traditional trailer does but I have this little uh, base camp so what I like about this is mobile I can take it outside if I want but when I'm using it for the shower it just sits here the the actual shower head feeds through the wall of the shower comes out there's the shower head so what I do so what we're going to do is just turn this on, it starts sucking water out of there, and out we go there. And that is my very relaxing shower. And you can see the shower situation here. For a small trailer, this is a pretty good sized shower. And this thing heats up, you can have this as hot or as cold as you want. Well that felt fantastic after a long day. Another important factor about enjoying your time summer camping is having the luxury, whether it's outside, if you're in a tent, or just having a shower to cool off and clean off before you get to bed to me is a world of difference. So that felt fantastic. Gonna get uh, some clothes on and uh, go sit out by the fire and relax and call it a night. Well, after all day ATVing, being outside, going down to the river, fishing with no luck again, and then having a nice refreshing shower, getting all that sweat and grime, and sitting by a small little fire and having a cold beer, summertime camping can still be pretty good. My sister didn't necessarily want to be in one of my videos, but she couldn't come camping with me for two days and not get a chance to be on YouTube. So when you're summer camping, you can do kind of one of two things. You can find a nice shady spot and park your rig underneath a tree 
and enjoy the shade and the cooler temperatures, but then you've eliminated your solar regenerating power. Or you can just park out in the sun and use the solar and run your exhaust fans full blast to keep things cool in your living area. On this trip, I've chose to park out in the full sun. I've got my two solar panels on the back of Eddie generating power. We've had a pretty good forecast, so I've had no problems getting solar power to keep my batteries charged and topped up. I've been at this location, for, this is my fifth day now, and I've been running my standard gear, uh, a fridge in Eddie here. I have a fridge freezer in the truck that I now have with my gear, and I've been uh, testing that for the last month or so. I've been charging that with the, the Jackery. This is the Jackery 1000, and um, as I drive around, it recharges. It's been great, but for the last couple of days, I haven't been driving my truck. I used the Jackery solar panels that I, I haven't used in a long time. I dug them out thinking that this would be a trip that I would use them, and I was a little disappointed they were only generating like 40 watts of power to try to recharge this because this was completely drained. But because the solar panels on my trailer work so well, my battery bank is at like 84% and this is my fifth day and that's running my fans full blast, lights, toaster, fridge, the regular routine on my typical trip and I've decided I've just brought my Jackery in here and I plugged it into the wall and I'm going to charge up my Jackery from my uh, Battleborn bank and it's, it's working well, it's drawing, it was drawing a couple hundred watt hours but uh, yeah, that's going to charge this up quickly and I'll keep my uh, fridge freezer going, which is most importantly the freezer part of it, that I have my ice cubes for ice cold water in this, in this hot weather, my ice cream, and I have some frozen meat in that that I keep frozen. So it's really important that I keep that going. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, I find that if you're out in the sun, I run my exhaust fans full blast and I, I have two of them now. Uh, if you've been following the channel, I, I got the one in the uh, bathroom working now. So I run them both exhausting air and I keep the windows open. And I find that works best because if you're exhausting air out through the roof and you're drawing it in from the windows, you know, the windows uh, lower to the ground, it's getting the cooler air, especially the big window with the awning. So that's in the shade. That air seems to be a little bit cooler. If I push the max air fan, have the air going into the trailer from the roof, all it's doing is drawing that hot air on the roof of the trailer and pushing it in and it, actually heats up the trailer so I find what works is exhausting air out of both fans and drawing it in from the windows and it keeps things comfortable and it's at least 95 today and I'm out here it's probably 3 in the afternoon so you know midday sun is just beating on Eddie here I got the awning out and it's uh, it's for the most part pretty comfortable so before I wrap up the video I just wanted to kind of touch on the Isico fridge freezer that I've gotten uh, I've been using it now on three different trips and I've been really happy with it. So I just want to touch base with that. Um, I put out a review video, one or two videos back about it. Iceco gave it to me and uh, I did a review on it. But I am doing a follow-up here just to kind of let you know how it's been working. And I've been very impressed with it. Um, the pros I find are it's very energy efficient. So if you're doing uh, overlanding or for me in the summer when uh, you're drying a lot of power, that's a really big deal and it's been very efficient. So that is the number one thing. Um, it has, I think, that extra insulation which adds to the efficiency of it. Um, but the freezer part for me in the summer camping, I can't say enough how much I like having ice cubes and ice cold water uh, when it's really hot because that to me has made it so much more comfortable. The last two summers I haven't really done a lot of camping. I've spent the summers working on Eddie for the most part. So now that Eddie's almost done I'm going to be doing a lot more summer camping and, and having a freezer uh, is, is fantastic. Can't say enough good things about it. Um, it's super quiet which is another big thing. It's probably going to make its way into Eddie here um, eventually so I because it's such a small trailer in here, you can really hear everything, and, and the compressor on uh, the new APL 55 that I have is really quiet. So I'm really impressed with that. It's sturdy, I've been bouncing it around. I'm not easy on gear, so the top of it, it's um, stainless steel. Mine is the black version, or you can get just the regular stainless steel one. Um, I've already scratched up the top of it, and I've been trying to be careful, so if you're really picky about your gear, um, you know, it's gonna probably get scratched, so if you're 
concerned about that, maybe just go with the plain stainless steel one or go with another model. But um, it's not that it's dented, it's just scratched. And again, I'm really rough in my gear. Um, so take that with a grain of salt, but I've scratched it up already. But besides that, it's not dented or damaged in any way. It's just got some scratches to the paint. So it is what it is for that. But overall, I just want to touch base on that because this video has been about summer camping and tips to do it. So if you can get a fridge freezer, uh, I tell you, it is the world of difference to enjoying um, summer camping, in my opinion. So if you're interested in that uh, fridge freezer, um, go check out my video review on it. And there's a discount code in there if you'd like. And as promised, if you made it to the end of the video, I'll show you my DIY raft project. I just got back from a trip with it. It's still not ready for prime time. It was the first inaugural kind of trip I took with it. And uh, I've been using my ATV ramps, experimenting with ways of getting it down when I'm by myself. Obviously, I can, you know, with a couple of friends, you can get the raft on and off the top of the tonneau cover easy enough. But my goal is to be self-sufficient, solo trips with it, have it loaded up and get it on and off my truck by myself. So that's still a work in progress, but stay tuned for that. My goal is to have it done for the fall so I can do some steelhead fishing in it. But here is uh, how it's looking now and pretty much going to be the um, final product. How I get it on and off the truck is still up for debate. And um, yeah, so stay tuned if you're interested in that. Thanks for watching. If you've made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.